Python slicing is a powerful operator that works on strings and lists. It takes a form of input start stop step where all parts are optional and can be negative and when not specified are set to defaults. Start defaults to zero, stop defaults to the length of the string or list and step defaults to one. When negative, start and stop counts from the end of the string or list, but stop is exclusive and step can be used to skip elements. You can reverse a list or string by using slicing with a step of minus one. This is a simple and efficient way to reverse the order of elements. Negative indices allow you to slice from the end of a list or a string. For example, you can slice the last three elements of a list using minus three as the start index. The step parameter in slicing allows you to skip elements. For example, you can take every second element from a list by setting the step to two. This is useful for creating sublists or extracting specific patterns from a list. You can overwrite just a part of a list using slicing. For example, you can replace the first three elements of a list with new values. Did you know Python has a built-in assert statement? The point of assert is to check for a condition. If it's true, nothing happens. And if it's false, assertion error exception is raised with an optional error message. Suppose you want to write a function that applies a volume that needs to be positive and 100 or less. Using assert, you could write it like this. Calling apply volume 50 works fine, but for 200, we get assertion error. Why not use standard exceptions? You can, but assertions are meant to be used to inform an unrecoverable error, internal self-check for your program, or other impossible situations. It's a debugging aid, not a mechanism for error handling. Internally, assert expression expands to the following. As you can see, assert only works when the debug variable is set to true, which is the default in normal executions. If you run Python with minus capital O, it will set debug to false and all assert statements will be ignored. You can also pass a message to the assertion error, which can be useful for debugging. In Python, underscores have different meanings depending on their context. Single leading underscore is a convention to indicate that a variable or method is intended for internal use only. It is a hint to a programmer that it should not be accessed directly from outside the class or module. This is not enforced in Python, but it is a strong convention. Other uh, convention, wildcard imports will not import names that start with an underscore. Single trailing underscore is used to avoid naming conflicts with Python keywords or built-in names. For example, if you want to use the name class, you can use class underscore instead. Double leading underscore triggers name mangling, where the interpreter changes the name of the variable to include the class name. This is used to avoid naming conflicts in subclasses and other places. For example, in this class, which has a variable underscore underscore test, internally it will be renamed to underscore test underscore underscore test. Another name for a double underscore is dunder, short for double underscore. Double leading and trailing underscores are reserved for special use in Python such as magic methods like init and are not meant to be used in user-defined names. They should be avoided to prevent conflicts with Python's internal mechanisms. Single underscore is often used as a temporary variable or to indicate that a value is not going to be used. It is a convention to indicate that the value is insignificant or that it is a placeholder. Python has four different ways to format strings. The first one is using the percentage operator. Sometimes it's called old style, which comes from C and works exactly like printf. You pass a format string and a tuple of values to be formatted. As well as in C, there is a rich set of format specifiers. 
it is also possible to use the percentage operator with a dictionary and refer to the keys in the format string by name. This makes it easier to modify format strings in future, as you can change the keys in the dictionary without changing the format string. The second way is using str format method, which is more powerful and flexible. As with percentage operator, you can also use named placeholders with a dictionary. This was introduced in Python 3 and ported to Python 2.7, However, no one cares about Python 2.7 anymore, so it's not that relevant. This new style formatting is generally more preferred over the old style, as it is more readable and easier to use. The third way is using F strings or formatted string literals, which are available in Python 3.6 and later. This is the most powerful and preferred way to format strings in Python, and because you can use any expression inside the curly braces, it is also the most flexible. For example, you can do inline calculations. Like in this example, I am printing the age of the person five years in future. Behind the scenes, F strings, that's how they're called by the way, are Python parser feature that converts the string into a series of constants and expressions, like this, which are then evaluated at runtime. The call above will be converted to the following, and as you can see, it still outputs the same result. The fourth and the final way is using string.template class, which is a more limited but simpler way to do format strings. You need to import the template class from the strings module first, instantiate it, and perform the substitutions. This is useful when format string is user provided, as it is more secure and does not allow arbitrary code execution. In all other cases, it is better to use fstrings or method 3. This is not really a tip, but a Zen of Python. Executing import this will print the following set of statements to the terminal. It's the entire Python philosophy. It's a collection of aphorisms that capture the philosophy of Python. It is so important that it is included in the Python standard library. All of the tips in this videos are based on the Zen of Python and all of the best practices in Python are based on import this. With statement is one of the most useful features in Python. Although it looks obscure at first, it is actually very simple and powerful. It allows you to manage resources such as files, network connections and database connections, all in a clean and efficient way. For instance, the built-in open function returns a context manager that automatically closes the file when the block of code is exited, even if the exception is raised or the block is exited prematurely. And yes, it's based on the concept of context managers, which are objects that define a runtime context to be established when executing a block of code. The context manager ensures that the file is closed when the block is exited. It's important because it prevents resource leaks and ensures that the file is properly saved. This code roughly translates to the following if you didn't use context managers. Doing the same thing on your own API is actually very simple. You just need to implement two methods, enter and exit on your own class, like this. The enter method is called when the block is entered and the exit method is called when the block is exited. You can use the context manager in the following way. And as you can see, we have entering the context, inside the context and exiting the context printed to the terminal. And if you thought this is hard to implement, or you just hate classes, you can use a helper from the context lib module called context manager, write your own function and annotate it with a context manager, which achieves pretty much the same result. You can also pass some value to the context manager. To do that, use the following code. And to check that it is indeed passed, let's execute our context manager with a value 42. Here you go. In Python, functions are first-class objects, which means they can be treated like any other object. You can assign them to variables, pass them as arguments to other functions, and return them from other functions. This is a powerful feature that allows for functional programming techniques. Let's have a function to play with and call it, say, greet. You can assign this function to a variable 
without any issues. Or you can pass a function as an argument to another function. You can even return a function as a result of executing another function. You can also nest functions into each other and so on. Needless to say, functions can be stored in data structures and passed around just like any other object. There is also a concise way to define a small throwaway function without formally defining them using the def keyword. Let's say we have a function called add, accepting two arguments, x and y. You can do the same by defining a lambda, which is absolutely equivalent to the expression above. Lambda functions are really important and they are often used in higher order functions like map, filter and reduce, where you need a simple function for a short period of time. Decorators are a powerful feature in Python that allows you to modify the behavior of functions or methods. Decorators are a critical concept to understand for advanced Python programming. They are like context managers for functions. They allow you to wrap a function with another function, modifying its behavior without changing the code of the original function. Here is the simplest decorator that you can write. What we're trying to achieve here is print a message before and after a function call. You can use this decorator in the following way. Let's say you have a say hello function, which prints hello comma argument, and we're going to apply a simple decorator to it. Now, if we call say hello, what's going to happen is the decorator will print before the function call message, then hello Alice, and then after the function call message. Python allows you to unpack arguments from lists or dictionaries when calling functions. Let's say we've got a function add, which simply adds two arguments. You can call this function explicitly, let's say add one and two, which results in three. But what if you have arguments as a list? Then you can use something called argument unpacking by simply putting a star in front of the list of arguments. Now, if I call this, we'll get the same result, three. In addition to the lists, you can also unpack arguments using a dictionary. All you have to do is create a dictionary which maps argument name to argument value and then call it in the following way with a double star in front. This will achieve absolutely the same result. In Python, if a function does not explicitly return a value, it implicitly returns none. Therefore, if you have the following function, which returns value if it's not null, otherwise returns none, the function will be equivalent to the following. Because if you don't specify anything after return, Python will assume that you return none. It will also be equivalent to the following. Because if you don't return anything, Python assumes you are still returning none. In Python, there is a difference between equals operator and is operator. To demonstrate, I have declared two lists, A and B, which have the same elements, and I also declared variable C, which is assigned to A. Let's try out the equals operator. So as you can see, comparing A to B, A to C, and B to C always returns true. Although A and B point to different instances in memory, they still contain the same elements. So this is expected. Now let's try the same with is operator. As you can see, the result is false, true, false. A is B is false because they're pointing to different memory instances. So this is expected. A is C is true because we just assigned the memory location of A to variable C and B is C is also false because they're pointing to different locations in memory. In Python, when you define your own class and then print it to the console, you get this strange message. And this is because by default, classes are printed to a string containing class name and ID of the object instance. Of course, this is not very useful and you can override this behavior. To override, you can define a special method called dunder string and then put any message you like. Now, if I print the class to the console, you'll get one comma two. If you don't believe this is actually working, I'll add a fancy message, something like this. And you get the ranges between one and two. Now, this is brilliant and a str method is designed to display the class for humans. There is another method called wrapper, which serves similar purpose to str, however, is designed for developers rather than humans. Therefore, if you define the wrapper method and execute this code again, you'll see that 
the debugger is using the wrapper method, which displays the range in a shorter format, more developer friendly. And this is the only difference. These are just the first 20 Python tips, and there will be more. So if you like these tips, please like the video, please, please, and please subscribe. See you later, I hope.